Hey, hey, what is up YouTube? Andrew Rooney here, drummer, drum teacher here in Auckland, New Zealand. Doing another one of these things where I set up my camera, my phone, and talk to it. I don't do a lot of these, haven't done one of these for a while, so when something happens, uh, well, invariably based around music and it's really hits me and it really impacts me, I like to share it. And this one was just a really cool uh, teaching story. Uh, I mean, as a drum teacher, as a music teacher, you get cool stories every day, really. Um, but this one really stood out. And I'm not here to pump up my own tires, talk about how magnificent I am as a drum teacher, but more probably just to share what you might hope or want to get from an experienced teacher who's been, been around the block a few times and has got something to share and an a effective teaching strategy. Now, I've talked in the past about how my teaching approach has changed over the years, over the decades. Gray, no here. And I've ended up sort of right back at the start with a, a song-based approach to teaching drums. And anyway, I'll always ask my students, you know, what's a song that you would like to do? And write down songs, make up a Spotify playlist, and we'll, we'll check out all these songs that you like. Um, point being that they're interested in them and, and they enjoy the songs as opposed to me giving old man songs to them. Now this student yesterday uh, suggested Dire Straits Walk of Life. Now I don't think I've ever played that song in my life. Um, it's hard to know. I've done a lot of gigs. I don't know. Maybe I played it at some point but I don't remember playing it and I certainly am not familiar with the drum part. So instantly we get into this thing where the lesson's very personalized, right? The student, I've told the student to give me something that they are inspired by and want to learn. The student has brought, brought it in and we can instantly start looking at it. And also thanks to Drumeo because I've got access to uh, 6,000 plus songs in the Drumeo database and we can instantly type in Walk of Life into Drumeo, bring it up and we've got all the sheet music there. Uh, we can loop sections and and whatnot. So I bring up Walk of Life in Drumeo. And the first thing that I notice is that it's 172 BPM. Eighth notes on the right hand. On the hi-hat. And that's fast. So straight away we've got a, a speed challenge. We've got an endurance stamina challenge on that right hand. So that's cool. That's one thing that we're going to have to look at. And what I like to do with students who are in this this particular kid's uh, ability range, experience range of drumming and lessons, is I like to get them to sight read the song straight away. So we sight read it together. So I bring it up on the screen and just put the song on and we just, and I just say, hey, I'll see you at the end. And we sight read our way through the song. So we do that with Walk of Life and it's pretty fast and there's a couple of little bass drum variations and he's getting them and, and you know might miss the odd one and but you know we're keeping up and doing really good did an awesome job on it and then we got to the end of the song and sort of took a breath and all right debrief let's have a chat about what just happened did you notice anything yeah it was fast yep so that's hands right we got to keep working our hands oh yeah cool that reinforces all of the hand work that we do at the start of each lesson we work on our hands singles doubles simple rudiments and we work on our speed and our endurance oh, of course that's why we're doing that because songs need that and then, then that light bulb goes off which is really cool again song-based learning it's the way to go practical like things that are actually going to pop up in songs that you might want to play so we may as well look at it in terms of songs, right? As opposed to exercises. Then the other thing, you know, and then I kept pushing it. Like, was there anything else you noticed? And uh, sort of thinking of a few things. And I said, look, there's a signature fill. There's a trademark or signature fill in the song. And it was two sixteenths and two eighth notes at the end of a bar, starting on the end of three. So you'd be going one, two, three, da, 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 da. One, two, three, da, 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 da. So then we dug into that. 
Now again, as opposed to taking a page of basic drum fills out of a book and just going through them like a robot, we've found a fill <clears throat> that's actually in a song that's getting repeated in the song. And we're, we're basing it off that song-based approach to learning. So let's, let's take this fill and let's really dig into it. Now let's break it down. So <clears throat> one thing's for certain, we're going to have to get the sticking right on this. And, and, you know, his sticking was a bit funky at first, so we needed to sort it out. We need to come out of that one, two, three. It has to really, if we're right-handed, playing right-handed kit, we really need to go right, left, right, left. So we can come out, crash on the right, and it's just simple stick path, stick control. It's just a, it's just a sort of a logical thing that you need to get your head around. Oh, okay, cool. So that's why sticking's important. Um, cool, got it. And then we we did that in Drumio. You guys can get a 30-day free Drumio trial, by the way. Just hit my link. Then we just loop that fill. So I always tell my students we want to we wanna practice our fill. We want to get the fill right. Make sure we've got the sticking. Make sure we can play it. And then as soon as possible, we want to put it into context. Now, into context means we loop the bar before and the bar after, at least. Probably realistically to, to do things musically, perhaps a four bar phrase, ideally. Or, or just two bar if we're going to slow it down, right? So we'll, we slowed it down. Again, this is all available in the Dromeo interface. We slowed it down to about 70%. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, da 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 da. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, da 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 da. Until that's just flowing, really, really flowing. And again, coming back to like what an effective teacher should be doing for you, and what an effective lesson looks like, we start using some terminology. So we have made this part of your vocab, part of your drumming vocab, to the point where you could just, you know, someone could wake you up at two o'clock in the morning, ah, one, two, three, da, 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 and you can just do it. So it's just completely internalized muscle memory. It's in your brain and in your body, and you just know that feel. You have added it to your language, to your drumming vocab. And you can play it hopefully at a diff uh, effectively at different tempo markings. So let's keep going with this. So so this is what we did in our lesson. Then I said, well, hey, how about orchestration? Oh, what's orchestration? Orchestration is when you start basically changing the voicing of where we play this fill. How could we play this fill? Dum ta dum snare tom, floor tom floor tom, da da dum dum psh. Um sort of hurt a style on the tom first du -du -dum -dum. back down to the snare high tom to floor tom there's no real end to the orchestration part of it but it, it just goes on and on and that's really where you're starting to internalize new vocab new drum parts and not just mechanically going through them robotically, exercise one, exercise two, exercise three, exercise four. No, 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 let's dig into it and personalize it. Because if you can personalize the part, you might find an orchestration that you really like. I mean, personally, I think I'm probably going to like the snare. High tom, floor tom, floor tom. I play a simple four-piece kit. Works good. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. da 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 and there you go. You've got a really cool, effective fill that is from a song, not from a book. You've taken it from a song and you've personalized it. You've made it your own. Um, and again, I just really want to stress, I'm not trying to pump up my tires and say how cool I am and how original and what I'm doing is completely changing the mold in terms of music. But I just thought it was cool. There's just so many elements here that I take for granted. And when I step back and thought about it, I thought, that's really cool. It's really cool that I got the resource to instantly, I don't even have to transcribe the song or, you know, guess the parts. We've got the whole song here. I've got every song in Dromeo. You've got it instantly. 
So the song you want to learn, we've, we've got it right now. Like the minute you walked in the door, we've got it. We worked on our sight reading. We we identified some potential issues or barriers that are going to make it hard to learn the song. Tempo being the first one. And then we reinforce another thing that we constantly do, which is, oh, that's why we work on our hands. Actual songs can be fast and they can be really challenging. The drum beat's not difficult. The independence and coordination required. I can play that beat. I just can't play it that fast. That's why we work on our hands every day. It's like vegetables. You just got to keep going with them and it'll pay off and keep you healthy. And then we started looking at Okay, what are some cool things, some trademark things we can take out of it? Hey, we've got this fill. Let's take this fill, let's loop it, let's play it until it's just supernatural, and then it's orchestration. Let's actually use this and personalize it and make it your own. So again, not groundbreaking, not anything probably unique or different. I just thought it's really cool that we've got access to the, all this resource and myself my evolution as a drum teacher sort of from where i started teaching which is which was probably a little bit more book exercise based especially coming out of music school i was fully in that world and i've ended up at this totally different place i can still do music school teaching and whiplash and all that no problem but most people come to lessons and, and want to learn an instrument to play music. They don't come in and say, oh, hey, uh, I'd like to come in and learn old bungee exercises. I want to learn music. And it doesn't have to be the most difficult or technical fill. It's all about that execution, right? But anyway, this is Drum Teacher Rant. We are back with our rants. Hope you dug this one. I would love to hear your feedback in the comments. Be sure to subscribe, do the right thing, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Ciao.